Um, everybody knows that when we go through a sermon series or especially a Bible study series, whether you attend it or not, it, you get pulled in. You get pulled in. So it's best to be, amen, for the offering on the intro. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. But um, for those of us who were here on the Sunday of Resurrection, Resurrection Sunday, something happened. Something happened. And we began a journey, a coming out of sorts, a transition of sorts that carries us through Pentecost Sunday. That's why it's so important that for those of you, especially those who've been following the series, to be present here on June 9th. Because that's the culmination of this exodus. The Holy Spirit fell down upon the, the disciples. They became apostles at that time and they went forth, they were sent forth. And there's a sending forth that's happening in all of our lives, but there is a journey that we all own these five to six weeks. And so I want to make sure everybody's equipped for that. Y'all ready to be equipped? Yeah. yeah. Amen. All right. So if you will turn with me to Exodus chapter 14, kind of jumping around as the Holy Spirit leads. Exodus chapter 14. Oh, okay. All over. All right. Amen. Please make your way there. Even though it's up here, I want you to see it in your own Bibles if you have it with you on your app. If you allow me to take us to the throne of grace. Lord, we bless you on this day. We thank you for bringing us all together, Lord. Your word tells us not to forsake the meeting of the saints. Oh, amen. The assembling of the saints, God. There's just so much that happens when we come together, God. Amen. There's so much power. There's so much healing. There's just so much understanding. Lord, no one understands my spiritual journey like my brother or sister in Christ. Amen. So I thank you for bringing us together, Lord. Amen. In order to share this together, to grow together, to walk together, to support one another. God, bless ye this word today. That it sinks deeply into our minds and into our hearts, God. And our spirit already resonates, God. But my mind needs to catch up with it. My heart needs to grow in it, God. My understanding needs to wrap around it, God. And so we honor you right now, God, and we call forth on this word to do all that you established it to do, God, when it was written. As I studied it, as I digest it for myself, and even as I deliver it, God, may it fine-tune us, God. May it grow us, Lord. Challenge us, God, and open our eyes and enlighten us. All these things we speak over this word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, so we are here in Exodus chapter 14. I want to look at verses 1 through Nine. Also, if you do not have a Bible and you want to reference one today or have one to take home, please let us know. Throw your hand in the air. We'll put one in your hand. We're ready to do that. That is a gift to you from this ministry. We do believe what the Word says. Freely you have been given the gospel, the Word of God. Freely you shall give it. So we are here, Exodus chapter 14, and it reads, Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to turn back and camp in front of Pahaharoth. Say that five times. <laughs> Between Migdal and the sea, in front of Baal Zephon. You shall camp out opposite it by the sea. Pharaoh will say of the Israelites, they are wandering aimlessly in the land. The wilderness has closed in on them. I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will pursue them, so that I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. And they did so. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the minds of Pharaoh and his officials were changed toward the people, and they said, what have we done letting Israel leave our service? So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 pink chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers all over, um, over all of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the Israelites who were going out boldly. The Egyptians pursued them, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, his chariot drivers, and his army. They overtook them, camped by the sea, by Pi Haharoth, in front of Baal Zephon. So ends the reading of the word of God. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, as boring as that sounded, watch it come alive. <laughs> all right. Let's break this down. All right. Here is the clause. Put yourself in the story. And I'm going to retell it. Put yourself in the story. The Israelites have been in bondage. Anybody know what bondage feels yeah, like? Yeah. Amen. All right. The Israelites have been in bondage. God had given them a promise of freedom, but not just freedom, a land of their own. Put yourself in the story. 
Not only is God's promise for freedom, it's for restoration and ownership. Y'all don't know your promise. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I just told you that not only will you be made free, you will be restored and you will have something of your own. Okay? This needs to resonate with anybody who's ever had to unknowingly and unwillingly share or partner with somebody. Not only will you got to be set free, but you'll have something of your own who will love you only. Who will, uh, you know, I'll talk to the wrong congregation. Not me, don't worry about it. Uh, uh, okay, let, well, let's talk about uh, rent. I don't know. I mean, maybe you're waiting for a homeowner. I need for you to understand the bondage that you have been under, whatever your bondage is. I use analogies and things like that and examples to help you relate. Because sometimes we come to church and we don't realize that the pastor's talking about us. Okay? Because it's not my example. But they were leaving. And he told them, not only am I going to free you, but I'm going to give you your own. Last week we learned why God didn't take them on the shorter path. Right. Right. Okay? Because had they faced war early on, they would have returned to Egypt. Right. We admitted within ourselves, had we been hit with our, our personal work ahead of time, we might have turned back and said, you know, it's not so bad after all. Right, right. Because right. a lot of times we don't like to face ourselves, and that's what God kept saying, that sustaining effort. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna let you go over there and mess that up too. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Because you hadn't done your work yet. Yeah. So because I know that instead of doing the work early on, you were going to turn backwards back to Egypt, I took you the longer route. Amen. Okay. So now we're on the long road. Um, Media, can you pull up my first map I introduced last week? We're here on the long road. This is a teaching church. So we use charts, diagrams, pictures, and whatever else I can use to help illustrate the point. All right, y'all remember this from last week? We started out in bondage over here in Egypt. We are trying to make our way over here to Canaan. But instead of going the short route through the Philistine country, we decided we cannot face war because we would crumble and go back to Egypt. So we decided, God decided he's going to take us the long way. All right. Now, check this out right here. This is the Red Sea. Right. Pardon? The Reds, okay. This is the uh -huh. Red Sea. Now, do you notice that you could have easily gone, he could have taken them this way. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. Let me show right. you again. He could have easily just taken them right here. Mm -hmm. Right. Missed the Red Sea completely. Can you please bring up my other one? My other map. Well, let's go in a little bit closer. See, because there's Pi Haheroth right there. Okay, you don't have it. All right, well, we're just going to picture this blown up. Because this is what happened. They started going this way, and God said, tell them to turn back. Mm. And so what they did was they cut back around this way to come this extra little piece, and we're gonna talk about why. Mm -hmm. We're gonna talk about why. Leave that up for a second. You know, at that point I had to tell myself, I didn't have it in my notes, stop, don't jump ahead. Because <laughs> I'll tell the whole story in one breath. <laughs> if you look at verse two, it said, tell the Israelites to turn back and camp in front of Paharoth between Migdal and the sea, in front of Baal Zephon. You shall camp outside it, excuse me, opposite it by the sea. Pharaoh will save the Israelites. They are wandering aimlessly in the land. The wilderness has closed in on them. Look at this. Please look at this. I'm going to be John Bevere. Do you see it? Do you see that? For those in Bible study, that's what you said. Do you see? Tell me, you see this. When you turn back, remember, put yourself in a story. When you turn back, your pharaoh, your oppressor, that thing that's been holding you hostage, mm. will think that you have no direction. <laughs> oh. yeah. Anybody ever looked at you and the decision that you're making and where you're going and look at you like you're a fool? Yes. <laughs> God told you to turn back. Just back up a few steps or whatever. And your pharaoh said, oh, they don't have any direction. Your enemy will think that you got lost in the wilderness. Because why in the world, when you put a clean, like my son said, you put a clean mist, the Red Sea, why would you double back and head down into 
into trouble. Why does it look like you're going backwards? And so the people that are watching you, your oppressors, the one that held you down in the first place, say, oh, she don't know what she's doing. He has no idea where he's going. He's out in the wilderness. The lost his way, has no idea. And it just went. So in verse 1, he said, I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will pursue them. Understand, God was in control and is in control from the very start. He's the one that set the strategy. He said, go there, and this is what Pharaoh's going to say. Anybody ever gotten a preview from God? <laughs> he told you to do some food. And then he turned around and said, and they're going to say you're crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And they're going to say, you just wait. You'll need me before I need you. Yeah. Right. Oh, you think you're cutting me off? Huh? Uh, yeah, we'll see who cut who off. You'll be back. He, God said, this is what they're going to say. Pharaoh's going to say this. All right, so we're going back to the words. I will hard for us while you pursue them. Now, if you will, jump back to Exodus 5, 1 through 4 for me. You just don't put it up. You don't, don't go there. Afterward, now this is nine chapters prior to that. I'm going to show you something. Afterward, Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Let my people go so that they may celebrate a festival to me in the wilderness. Remember, that was the original. He didn't ask to just let them go. The original request was to let us go and worship God. Yeah, right. All right? So he said, but Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should heed him and let Israel go? All right. I do not know the Lord, and I will not let Israel go. Then they said, the God of, Hebrew, uh, the, God of the Hebrews has revealed himself to us. Let us go a three days journey into the wilderness to sacrifice to the Lord our God, or you will fall upon us with pestilence or sword. But the king of Egypt said to them, Moses and Aaron, why are you taking the people away from their work? Get to your labors. No, let's get back to work. So, he hardened his heart. Back in chapter 14, the verse 5, said, when the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the minds of Pharaoh and his officials were changed toward the people. And they said, what have we done letting Israel leave our service? So, between chapter 5 and chapter 14, we had all these few things we call a plague, a few plagues. And remember, he would, he would start saying, you know, I might not even let these people go. And then God would harden his heart some more, and then here come three more plagues. And then he would say, you know, I might even let these people go. Just tell them to go. And then God would harden his heart, and here come some more plagues. So it already worn Pharaoh down until finally he was like, just go. Just go. Go worship your God. Go do a little festival. Do whatever. Just go. See, but here's what happened. They only supposed to be gone for three days. A three days journey into the wilderness, they turn around and come back. Pharaoh looked up and said, y'all aren't, aren't back yet. They're not back yet. All the while, God knew it was the rescue plan. It was a rescue plan. See, that's why Pharaoh let him get so far, and then he started thinking, wait a minute, hold on. Why? What have we done? Letting Israel leave our service. Verse 8 said, the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and pursued the Israelites who were going out boldly. Let me help you out a little bit, because this entire word is a prophetic word for you. The people that you, the situations that you, the companies that you, the organizations that you, that God has given you a window to leave. They think you're going to come back. <laughs> they think you're going to come back. They think that you were just taking a break. That you just needed some space. In your heart of hearts, you knew God was letting you, releasing you. Yeah. Can somebody say release? release? God was releasing you. But in their minds, you were coming back. For whatever reason, you were coming back. Anybody ever experienced that? And once they realized you weren't coming back, they were cool when they thought you were coming back. When that job thought you were coming back, you only on vacation. A legal house. When you told them, I just, I need, I need a break from us. Woo! I need a break from us. They thought you were coming back. You just gonna take a little a couple of breaths and get your mind right. See, but God told it. They won't agree. Thank you, Holy Ghost. They won't agree to completely release you, but they'll give you a break. Okay. So we're going to work with the break. 
Ah, uh, that's all right, y'all. It's tight in here. It's tight in here. That's all right. It's tight in here. They thought that you were going to come back to that foolishness in the family. Oh, she just needs a little space, you know. Oh, you know, she just got married, or, you know, they just had a little baby, or, oh, you know, they, you know, they just got started a new job, or, you know, they just moved or something like that. You know, we're going to give them time. No, sweetheart, you don't understand. Okay. When I moved, I moved on. Okay. When I, when I, when I, when I cleaved, I left. When I had him, I started a new life with the, the new baby representing a new life, and the new man, I, 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 when they say you're supposed to leave and cleave, well, I, was, I cleaved and I left. I'm not even a cut off kind of preacher. I'm a grafting preacher. <laughs> but they thought that you was only going to be gone for three days. Or six days, we talk about a round trip. And then after they realized you weren't coming back, that's when it pursues you. And God said, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. I'm going to let them come after you. That's when you hear the please, baby, please. <laughs> That's when you hear, you know, well, uh, we got a, uh, another offer for you. Um, we got some more benefits, or we got, you know. No, I'm, I'm good. I, I really am good. I, I really am good. I'm not coming back. Well, you know, we figured that if you just, you know, no, I'm, I'm not. And so he said here, verse 8, The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and pursued the Israelites, who were going out boldly. Don't you understand? They see you walking out boldly. Yeah. Not slinking. Because it's a whole new season. Yeah. I'm not going to slink and lie and say I'm going to do something that I'm not going to do. They were walking out boldly. And all of a sudden they realize, oh, they let you walk out. They let you put on a show. Let you do all of that. Because they still thought you were coming back. Mm -hmm. They still thought that they could could step over your boundaries. They still thought that they would have access to you. I know I'm talking to somebody there. Yeah. Yeah. They still, they didn't think you were serious. Mm -hmm. They didn't think you were really choosing you. Oh, yeah. That you were really choosing your life, your dreams, yeah. your family, yeah. your marriage. They didn't really believe it. Yeah. They didn't believe it. Yeah. And so you look, you step strong and you step boldly. Yeah. And now all of a sudden they look back and they're like, wait a minute. What have we done? <laughs> Letting Israel leave our service. Letting Israel leave the place where they used to serve us. Play on words. Service, serve us. It's all good. You can do you. As long as you're still doing me too. You're going to come up. We all come up. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. They will let you grow as long as you still. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. We all see that the other side of that. Remember, givers, you know, our hearts. Oh, when I eat, we all eat. When I, when I, when I, when I, don't you know on the flip side of that, though? Yep. There are some people that's cheering you on right. so that they can eat. That's right. Mm -hmm. that's right. They're not saying you are representative of us, so if you can do it, we all can do it. Please understand, there are people in your life like that who will see that you're, you're, you're getting your degree. That means we all can get our degree. You're getting a good job. We all can get a good job. You are getting married. That means we all have a chance to get married. Or whatever. You're strong. As a, that means we can be strong. And they use you as an example and as inspiration. But then there are those. You're just a meal ticket. You get married, they see that as a stable force in their in their life. Oh, we married well. We? <laughs> Y'all think I'm joking. There are some people who happy for you because they now see just how wonderful y'all are and there will always be somebody to borrow from, a house to stay at, somebody always going to keep their kid. They're always... They're not admiring you, sweetheart. Nope. They're figuring you into their budget. They're figuring you into their children. If something happened to me, they can at least go stay with them. You don't want to realize you're somebody to God parents just because you got a good marriage. Real talk. There is somebody that is planning to leave their kids with you. If something happens and you haven't signed a thing, 
<laughs> People are laughing all in this. They, put all, they already throw their, their guard down so they realize. Just for a real life, I'm trying to tell the truth. Marry well. Marry well and see what the family says. You married a what? Oh, we got a doctor in the family? No, I have a doctor right. Okay. <laughs> We know we don't have a doctor in the family. <laughs> free health care, free health care. No, 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 I'm so serious. I'm so serious. Anybody in health care and all of a sudden you're a medical consultant now? <laughs> Every day. Every day. <laughs> Honey, they hit the jackpot with your knowledge. What do you mean? We married well. <laughs> we married very well.
is that on this side, you are, you seem to be broken, and all you're doing is crying out to God. All you're doing is crying out to God. You look weak. You look broken. God, please help me. You're worshiping God. That's all you got to do. Like if, if I don't have anything else, anybody else, I need you, God. I need you, God. And so Pharaoh's looking like, mm-hmm. That wilderness getting a little much for me. You thought you were gonna run from me. Uh-huh. Now look at you. Uh-huh. You're on your knees. You're begging God to help you. You got the temple over here. And then the, what the enemy sees is that people coming at you, attacking you. This is what the Holy Ghost has to give you. Just this morning. Just this morning. I've been meditating on this word for some time, but just this morning. He said, "Tell him what." He said, "Look around. You got the temple here." But what the enemy sees is that you got attacks coming at you. That's what he sees. And so, oh, they, they, they don't break at some point. Because at some point, those attackers going to come over that, t- that tower and go get them. So they're scared. They waiting for help. They want me back. They want my protection back. They want security of my patient back. They want the, 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 the protection that I bring into Even though I mistreated them, at least I protect them. They want it back because they got these attackers coming and they need somebody to protect them. They're scared. And then you got this over here. They see. They know that that, that, that storm God, that Baal, isn't real. That's not your God. It has no power over you. See, but what they see is the storm that they think is going to scare you. And so you are right for the pickings. You are right for the pickings. You're under attack. You're under attack. You got a storm brewing over here, or the, the power of a storm brewing over here, and you broken, worshiping God over here. That's what the enemy sees. Don't you think that the reason why they're coming at you because they think that you're broken and they think that you're weak? Because they're looking at the situation that's surrounding you. But you need to see what's really surrounding you. You really need to see that there is a tower between you and your attacker. And he's a mighty strong tower. But if I'm determined 
they gonna fall off. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have to turn around and waste energy. You can't come with me. Yeah. You need to leave me alone. Yeah. As I keep walking in this direction, yeah. they gonna fall off. Yeah. If I walk in truth, the liars will fall off. Close. 
anybody ever been to a Marvel movie? Oh, yeah. SNN, hallelujah. Hallelujah for Marvel. God is telling y'all. And we gave me a chuckle a little bit. Just stay past the credits. Yeah! Yeah! Yes, that's good. If you ever go, if you're not familiar with Marvel movies, yeah. then you don't know what the world I'm talking about. Yeah. God said, just stay past the credits. Because what your enemy is seeing is the first ending. Yeah. What he's seeing is the first ending. See, but and don't you get caught up in the first ending. Because that's what we do. Okay. We'll see the first ending and think that that's how it ends. Okay. And how it's going to be. And we'll say, oh, and we'll say, oh, and we'll say, oh, and we'll you know what? With no idea about what's going to happen after that. And we get up, we pack up our stuff, and we leave the theater. Keep in mind. The whole thing is still sitting back now because they know. They know that there's more to the story. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Pay attention to the people that say, hold on now. Don't, don't move so quickly because it ain't over yet. God still got some revealing to do. See, we're so hasty. We're so hasty. We're so hasty. And you need to be able to determine when it's godly wisdom, okay, when it's fear, all right? There are times when you are supposed to move quickly with God. And there are some times you're supposed to wait and see what God is doing. So there's a, you need to pay attention when you get up and half the theater is still sitting down. Because they obviously know something you don't know, see something you don't see. And it will behoove you to sit on back down and wait to see what the preview is going to be for the next scene or to see how this is going to go. Because when you got up, the thing like the enemy was with. When you got up, it looked like the bad guy had overtaken them and I got to wait, oh, I got to wait till the next movie to figure it out. Oh, no, sir. Because in Marvel, with Marvel, it might be five years, ten years before the next movie comes. I'm talking to somebody right now. Y'all getting caught up in Marvel right now. I'm talking to you right now. Because you get caught up on how this scene ended. And you get up and you leave, you start operating in your life based on what it looked like when the last scene was going on. Okay. But you didn't wait to see what happens after the credits. Good, good. And you wait until the next move, movie, mm. and it could be two years, it could be five years, it could be ten years fooling around. Mm. Mm. And you didn't even wait. You didn't see, you didn't get the, you didn't wait to see if they really did change. At the end of some movies, the bad guy, they revealed after the credits that he was actually the good guy the whole time. Mm. That's right. They gave you a hint that, well, dang, all this time, I'm thinking that's the villain. <laughs> and that was the good guy. Right. Oh, Lord. Oh, they're telling me, you know, there's more to this story. It didn't just end. Yeah. Yeah. But in the meantime, I need you to stay still until the next movie comes out. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. God is saying stay until after the credits. See, because... When after the credits, he parted the Red Sea. That's all right. Elmi can be the only person clapping right now. Obviously, she's the only person that needs to have God open up the sea, the whole sea. Anybody in here can believe God for a miracle. For a miracle. Because that's where some of us are. That's where some of us are. We look around and it looks like bad, 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 bad. And the enemy is banking on us believing that. But if we just hold on and let God do all of that, God can work a straight up miracle. A miracle in your life. Just hold on. Just hold on. Just hold on. Stand up on your feet, please. Just hold on. Just hold on. And right now, I want to just pray for you the strength to hold on. And the wisdom. The wisdom to see things differently. Because we do get caught up. We do get caught up in the attacks that we think are coming. When we lose sight of the fact that you're protected on all sides. Don't get caught up in that. And don't even get caught up in the people attacking you. How in the world could they after all this come after me, come after me, come after me. They're supposed to come after you. To expose them. Thank you, Holy Ghost. There are some people that are coming after you. God is letting them come after you so that they can be exposed 
so that the people who are going to be the next victims can see who they really are. And because you are going to be strong enough to stand still and just let God expose, that's going to save somebody else from them. Because y'all know how we are? I watch how you treat her. I watch how you treat him. And I see you mistreating. I see you dog away. I was just about to be your next victim. I was just about to loan you some money. I was just about to do this. I was just about to take a chance on you. I was just about. But then I saw how you treated them. And it spared me. Because now I know not to fool with you. Now I know not to take that chance. Now, how many times have you ever been duped with something financially and you told some other people, child, don't you put, don't you invest in that, don't you start that, don't get that phone, don't get that plan, don't get that or whatever. They try to they all they're trying to scam you. You're exposing the scammer. God is using you to expose the scammers. Don't get nervous, don't get scared. Just let God do it. Because when it's time to take all of them out of your life, it's gonna be one fell swoop. And you're gonna walk on dry ground. Hallelujah, God. I call forth the kingdom of God. I call forth the kingdom of God. In my life. In my life. On this day. On this day. Amen. Amen. Amen.